it's Sarah with House Copper. Uh, today is polishing copper cookware. I get asked a lot how to polish copperware. Um, obviously it depends a lot on whether or not you have tin lined copper cookware or stainless steel lined copper cookware. If you have stainless steel lined copper cookware, um, you don't have to be as careful about any exterior polishes and paste and chemical removals. Um, whereas if you have tin lined copper cookware, you won't be able to do some of these processes unless you're planning to retin the piece. I will try and differentiate as we walk through where that matters, but just as a caveat, if you have questions or aren't sure, feel free to add in the comments below um, and I'll try and get to your questions. But anyway, first and foremost, there are um, about, I would say, three and a half ways that you can polish copper cookware. The first is natural, the second is chemical, and the third is mechanical. The first is very easy. You use something you find in your kitchen. Those are the age old using lemon juice or vinegar or ketchup or a combination of ketchup and flour and vinegar and salt and make a paste and sit on the outside. Um, I'll put a couple of those recipes in, in um, the description of this video. You can also find them online on my blog and in my book, Copper, Iron and Clay, if you want like exact recipes. Um, there's also um, rhubarb. You can use rhubarb, anything with the oxalic acid. People have also used potato. I don't, but it also works. Again, with that oxalic natural acid that um, will not damage tin lining. So any of those um, natural methods that I just listed out are totally fine for both tin lined copper cookware and stainless steel lined copper cookware. You don't have to worry about any of that splashing to the inside and damaging your tin lining. It won't. So um, that's a great way to start. It's a great way to maintain a polish on your copper cooker if you do it on a regular basis, you know, once every two to four weeks and you'll keep your copper polish up and keep those pieces of cookware pretty shiny. Um, the natural methods generally do not make that much of a dent in something that is um, highly oxidized, old, very dark, or has lacquer on it. They just, the natural methods just don't eat through that um, oxidation enough to make a difference. So don't get frustrated if you don't see a difference. Um, it just means that you have to be a little bit more aggressive. So moving on to the um, chemical. All right, so over here by the exterior sink that I use. First of all, protection. If you're gonna do anything with um, chemical uh, cleaners. You need to wear an apron. It will otherwise eat through your clothes. It will damage your clothes. It will stain your clothes and it will absolutely not come off. You get, may get holes. You're going to have discoloration. Um, secondly, you also are going to want to invest in some rubber gloves. These are just like cheapo from Walmart rubber gloves. I also have really heavy duty ones that I use if I'm doing a lot of work with the acids. Um, but you definitely need to protect your hands from all of this. Um, and also eyewear. I wear um, safety goggles when I do this because you don't want that acid splashing in your eyes. That would be uh, horrendous. So safety. Those three things you have to have if you're going to be working with acids. The first acid wash that you can try if you have a really dirty pot with a lot of baked on grease and your handle is disgusting and it's all in all the little like rivets and everything like that, you're going to want to use a caustic acid wash. So that's lye, that's like age old lye, caustic acid, sodium hydroxide, whatever you wanna call it, you can buy it online, you can get it at specific um, hardware stores sometimes, um, usually not, I mean, it's a dangerous chemical so that it's a little harder to find, um, but you, um, you have to be really careful with it and you also are going to dilute it. So start a little on the mild side where it's like almost all water and just a little bit of lye and then kind of beef it up depending on how um, like how how well it's it's eating through the grease it really should eat through your grease in like a day if the grease is really really bad it may take a couple of days word of warning if you have not very high quality copper cookware or the rivets are aluminum if you leave it soaking in lye for like a few days the lye will eat through that those crappy rivets. True story happened to me once. I was shocked. 
that the lye would actually eat through the metal. That's how bad of quality that metal was, those rivets. Now, this lye will not hurt stainless steel. So you can leave a pot soaking for three days with a stainless steel liner, it won't hurt your rivets, nothing. It won't hurt stainless, it won't hurt copper. Um, it will discolor copper, it will discolor brass. So anytime you use lye as a cleaner for grease, you will have to do additional, usually chemical polishing to get it back up to shine, if not mechanical. Another cleaner is back here. This is muriatic acid, so that's a more uh, aggressive acid. It's even more dangerous than the caustic acid, and that again, I also dilute. I usually do about, um, gosh, I'm like totally guessing. I don't even know, I just kind of go by feel, but I mean, really it's like, uh, seven eighths water and an eighth muriatic, and then you can just kind of watch it. That will brighten up your copper, um, but it will also, both of these will, will really affect your tin lining. Um, you know, you're going to see a darkening in both of these on your tin when you put them in the acid, but you'll see a brightening of copper in your muriatic. Um, so if you're going to retin, use either of these. If you have stainless, you're fine with both of these. Does that make sense? And then uh, you're still going to have to follow up with additional chemical polishing at least after using these acids to clean off your copper and, and degrease them. The first method of defense after doing this is to get Tarnax. Again, you can buy it online and you can buy it pretty much at any hardware store. And it is um, a liquid. It's not dangerous in the same way the other acids are dangerous um, for, you, for you, but I mean, obviously don't inhale it or like put it all over your skin. Um, and, and you know treat it like an acid. This will not horribly hurt your tin lining, but it can um, create streaks and issues. So if you have tin lining and you're going straight to Tarnax, even without the acids, um, keep this away from your tin lining. Um, just word of warning. And then the same goes for any type of paste after the Tarnax. So after your Tarnax, you wanna use a paste. With an, which is another chemical. Again, fine on stainless, keep it away from tin lining if you can. And that can be any type of polish. I've been happy and with all the different kinds. I've tried Barkeeper's Friend, Wright's Copper Polish, Eve Stone's Copper and Brass Polish. All those polishes, you know, do a really nice job. Um, just follow the directions on the package and you should see a brightening of your copper. So that's all the chemical options for you. Now. If you have really old copper or really dark copper or lacquered copper or um, just discolored from age and time, you know, with the oxidation of, of, of the years and none of this works, the only other way to polish it up is to use a mechanical process. And this is where the power tools come in. Meet my favorite tool, the buffing wheel. Um, so, um, if you have really, really old copper, or for instance, if you have tin lined some copper, if you try to do some tin lining yourself, or um, you get it back and it isn't polished and you want it nicer and polished, and you happen to have a buffing wheel, um, the buffing wheel is your friend to get stuff brand spanking new. So whenever I do a custom work, and I my last thing I do is in the shop is um, is this buffing and then I usually hand polish again with a paste but still I do this buffing wheel and so this is your power tool this is amazing a hard wheel is really really great for really shiny polish and then a softer wheel is really nice for um, for just like a like a like a less aggressive polish um, I do not have a powerful enough wheel that it removes copper um, and removes metal but if you're lucky enough to have one, it'll go even faster. Just try to be very careful. And of course, normal safety measures are part of this. Don't wear gloves, wear ear protection, eye protection, and breathing protection. I also like to protect my hair. Obviously, if you have long hair, you pull it back and, and um, a cap so that you don't have the buffing um, compound in your hair because it takes forever to get out, even if you're a guy. And then of course, you're gonna have all the different types of um, compounds um, red, white, Tripoli. Um, I like the Tripoli the best. And um, 
that will give you a wonderful sheen, but you have to have access to a large, decent sized motor for, of a buffing wheel to, to uh, really do the work and, um, and see a difference. So whenever I say it takes mechanical means, when people ask, I mean a buffing wheel. Um, sometimes, depending on how old something is and what is on it, sometimes I even have to use very fine sandpaper, which is still also a mechanical removal of um, grime, dirt, damage. So that's like worst case though, because you still have to buff out those scratches. But anyway, so there, there we go. Those are the, um, the ways that you clean um, copper cookware. And if you have any questions or comments or ideas or input or the ways that you've found that have worked, I definitely want to know and I'm sure everybody else would too. So I look forward to hearing from you. And um, until next time, thank you for watching.